Another really popular form of photography is macro photography, which is essentially close-up photography. Uh, it's kind of a confusing term because it's really, in theory, very similar to what a microscope does uh, in that it's bringing something very small into much larger focus. When shooting macro images, it's important to remember that you're going to need more depth of field. Because you are so close, the point of focus is going to be very, very shallow. Macro photography is great for subjects like bugs or flowers, uh, a lot of nature stuff. It is a really great form of photography. It's really beautiful. It's a great way to make abstract images um, and kind of trick the eye into not really knowing what you're looking at. So in thinking macro photography, think, you know, like artists like Giorgio O'Keefe, the painter. Really close-ups of flowers that are very abstracted. You don't know quite what they are. Uh, that's a really great example in painting form of, of a good use of macro photography. It's important to remember that a lot of lenses these days will say macro on them when in fact they're not really macro lenses. A true dedicated macro lens is generally around a focal length of 100, 120, uh, it's higher focal lengths like that. Generally you're, it will have such a good close focusing distance that you can literally touch the subject and still have it in focus. Uh, and that's really the mark of like a true macro lens. The nice thing about macro photography is there's a lot of room for experimentation and it's something you can really easily do in your backyard, in a garden, in a park, and the possibilities are really endless and I, that's really the reason why it's so popular uh, and the results are so beautiful. And that's just some basic information about macro photography.